Welcome to the Advisory Science Channel. Animals including humans, year three. Think about your breakfast this morning. What did you eat? Did you know that what you ate is a result of a very important scientific concept? In this video, we'll look at the different animal feeding groups, food groups, nutrient requirements, the human skeleton, other animal bones, and finally, muscles and movement. All living things need nutrients to grow, to get energy and to stay alive. But not all living things get their nutrients in the same way. Plants are a special group of living things that use sunlight energy, water and carbon dioxide to make their own food. We call them producers. Animals, on the other hand, cannot make their own food and need to get their energy from plants or other animals. We can classify animals into different groups based on their diets. Animals that mostly eat plants are called herbivores. And then we have carnivores who mostly eat meat. Sharks, eagles and lions are some examples. There's also a group of animals who eat both plants and animals. These are called omnivores, and foxes, pigs, and most bears belong to this group. Humans also belong to this group. Eating a wider range of foods increases chances of survival. But unlike other animals, many humans can choose their food based on things like their culture, religion, and what they believe is right. They can think about how their food choices affect their health and the world around them. Now that we know which feeding group animals belong to, let's take a closer look at the seven nutrients that we need. First up, carbohydrates. These foods give us energy quickly, like sugar, or over a long period of time, like bread. Next, we have fats. You might have heard that fats are bad, but actually we need them to store energy to keep us warm and to protect our organs. Good sources of fats are avocados and olive oil. Proteins like fish, eggs and nuts are vital for building and repairing our body's muscles, skin, hair and nails. Vitamins and minerals are also important for keeping us healthy. We can find them in fruits and vegetables. They help us use the other nutrients and prevent illness. Don't forget about fibre. It helps keep our digestion running smoothly. It boosts the benefits of vitamins and minerals that we eat and even lowers our risk of certain diseases. And finally, water. Most of our body is made of water and it helps us move nutrients around and to remove waste. So there you have it, the seven nutrients that we need for a healthy body. But how much of each do we need? Well, let's start with humans. Did you know that the amount of energy we need varies depending on our age, size and activity level? Children, for example, need fewer nutrients than adults because their bodies are smaller. And what about pregnant women? They need more nutrients because their bodies have increased in size to accommodate a growing baby. And have you ever heard of weightlifters or long distance runners? They also need different amounts of energy and nutrients to fuel their bodies. But what happens when we eat too many nutrients? These can be stored in our bodies as fat, which can lead to obesity and other related health problems. Unfortunately, in the UK, one in four adults is obese. Not eating enough food can lead to tiredness, weak bones and difficulty fighting diseases. In some parts of the world, it can even mean starvation. That's why it's important to eat a healthy and balanced diet if you can. And we can follow the guidelines of the Eat Well Plate. It tells us that most of our food should come from carbohydrates, fruits and vegetables, with smaller amounts of dairy and occasional treats from fatty and sugary foods. Other animals have their own unique energy needs. Tigers, for example, are large carnivores and regularly have to feed on other animals for energy. Compare this to snakes. 
they can survive for up to two years without food. And have you ever heard of hibernation? Some animals, like grizzly bears, eat a lot of food before they rest for the winter. They don't eat, drink or move much for several months to conserve energy. And last but not least, what about hummingbirds? They're tiny but mighty, flapping their wings up to 80 times a second. To fuel all that movement, they eat up to twice their own body weight in nectar every day. The energy animals get from food is used to keep their body systems working properly. One example of this is the musculoskeletal system. We'll look now at the function of the main bones and muscles. Underneath our skin lies the framework that gives our body its shape. That's right, it's our skeleton made up of 206 bones. But what do bones do for us? Some bones support our body. Imagine, if bones weren't there, we'd just be a pile of skin and muscles. Another important job is that bones allow us to move. They're not just rigid and lifeless, bones are alive and growing until the day we die. And that's why, if you've ever broken a bone, it feels really painful. Other bones protect our body, like the skull. It protects our delicate brain. Did you know? The jaws are a pair of bones thought to be the hardest bones in our body. The spine is attached to the bottom of the skull and it helps control our movements. From sitting to standing, walking, twisting and bending, the spine is what makes it all possible. The chest, made up of ribs and breastbone, protects the lungs and heart. The arms with the humerus, radius and ulna, and the hands with the carpals, metacarpals and phalanges allow us to reach and hold on to things. Our pelvis supports the spine and protects the bladder and uterus in females. The hip bones and tailbone are also part of the pelvis and their arrangement allows a baby to pass through during childbirth. The legs, made up of the femur, tibia, fibula and the feet with the tarsals and metatarsals support our weight even when we're standing or running. And did you know that more than half of the bones in our body are found in our hands and feet? Bones are made mostly of a protein called collagen and a mineral called calcium. Our bodies can't make calcium, so we have to get it from the food that we eat. Almonds, milk and broccoli are good sources. However, if we don't eat enough calcium or take supplements, our bones can become weak and prone to disease, like osteoporosis. This is a bone disease where the body does not produce enough bone or loses too much bone, making them easy to snap. So now you know, bones are not just lifeless structures, but vital parts of our body that play a crucial role in our overall health and well-being. But wait, did you know that only 4% of all animals have bones? and that some animals have bones both inside and outside their body. Or that some animals have no bones at all. You might not have noticed, but animal bones like bat wings, whale fins and our own hands are actually quite similar. Although the thickness, size and weight are different. And did you know giraffes and humans have the same number of neck bones, though the giraffes are much longer? Isn't that fascinating? Other animals have very different bones than humans do. Cows, sheep, goats and antelopes have horns made from bone that they use for protection. Elks, deer, moose and some other animals have antlers and these fall off every year and they grow a new pair. How cool is that? Now let's talk about animals with a lot of bones. A python has approximately 1,000 800 bones in its body, which is the most of any animal. These bones are very small and flexible, allowing the snake to move its skeleton apart and fit around any large prey it swallowed whole. Wow, imagine having that many bones. You may have heard that dinosaurs had very large bones. Some of these bones became buried as the earth moved and turned into fossils over time. But did you know that bones usually break down after an animal dies? It's only when they're buried quickly, with very little oxygen reaching them, that they keep their form and turn into fossils. 
We are very lucky to have these ancient bones to study nowadays. But what about animals without bones? It may surprise you to know that most animals are actually boneless. They might have a hard outer casing covering their body, like spiders and crabs. And we call this casing an exoskeleton. And some animals have a skeleton both inside and outside their body. A tortoise, for example, has an exoskeleton as part of its ribs and spine. This protects its organs and body from predators or from damage by the environment. Finally, other animals have no skeleton inside or outside their body, like worms, jellyfish and sea slugs. These animals usually move by using their muscles to push against something outside their body, like soil for worms and water for jellyfish and sea slugs. So we can see that although some animals use bones to move, even animals without bones can get moving. Let's find out how they do this and the other structures involved. Between two or more bones is a space called a joint. For example, the joint between the jaw bones allows the mouth to open and close. Joints help us bend and move our limbs, like lifting our arms or picking up a knife and fork. Another important structure that helps us move is muscle. These cover our bones and there are over 600 muscles in the human body, including more than 30 in the face. Some muscles work without us having to think about them, like the heart muscle, which pumps about 100,000 times a day. But there's another type of muscle called skeletal muscle, which is attached to our skeleton. This is the kind we have to think about for it to work. These muscles help us stand still, write, and even breathe. They're attached to bones by strong, flexible, rope-like structures called tendons. These muscles can only pull, they cannot push, so they have to work in pairs to move our body parts. For example, when we relax our arm, the tricep muscle at the back of the arm contracts. It gets shorter and fatter and pulls on the bone. The bicep at the front of the arm relaxes and the arm moves down at the joint. When you want to bend your arm towards your body, your bicep muscle contracts and pulls on the bone, whilst the tricep relaxes this time return into its normal size. Other animals have muscles too, and their muscles are often different to humans in size and strength. For example, chimpanzees have larger and stronger muscles because they spend most of their time in trees, hanging and swinging from branches. An elephant's trunk has about 40,000 different muscles and can be used for various activities like communicating, smelling and eating. Kangaroos, rabbits and fleas are great at using their muscles to jump and escape predators. Sometimes things can go wrong with our muscles, making it hard to move, and in some cases affecting muscles that help our heart and lungs. Dr. Stephen Hawking was a well-known scientist who developed a disease that weakened his muscles, so he couldn't move or talk. But he didn't give up. He used a special computer to speak and teach and became a professor, helping us to understand black holes and the universe. Thanks for watching. For more science resources, visit our website, advisoryscience.com, and check out the blog for even more educational content. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest episodes.